longer with Richard Clarida, the Vice Chairman of the Federal Reserve. Thank you for being here. You bet. So let's just start out where we are in terms of U.S. growth, yeah. which has slowed down a yeah. little bit this uh -huh. year. What's the outlook? I think the outlook, sir, is we had a really strong year last year, 3% growth. Uh, and I think growth may slow a bit this year, but uh, the unemployment rate's at a 50-year low. Inflation is, you know, at our goal or slightly below. So the U.S. economy is in a good place. Here at the IMF World Bank meetings, though, the theme is the synchronized global slowdown yeah. that's happening around the world. And, and one big question is how much that affects us and spills over into the U.S. Yeah. How do you think about that? And, you know, Sarah, there is an effect uh, through several channels. One, when the global economy slows, our exports tend to slow down, and we and we see that. Also, as you know, the U.S. is part of a global financial market, and so if there's uncertainty abroad, that tends to spill over to our markets as well. So it is a factor, you bet. What about, I mean, it feels like we've had a few false alarms with recessions. You know, we had that steep drop in stocks last December, yeah. and everyone was talking about recession. We get one bad data or mixed messages on yeah. the economy. Why do you think we're so sensitive to that? You know, I'm not sure. You know, this this expansion is now in July. This will be uh, a 10 year plus expansion, the longest in U.S. history. And so perhaps people are conditioned to thinking that as these things go on, there's more of that risk. But, you know, Sarah, we, we don't see it. We don't see an elevated uh, recession risk. There are a lot of different indicators. You know, they move up and down. But as I said, the economy's in a good place. What happens if the U.S. and China are able to reach a deal on yeah. trade? What would the impact be on the economy? I think it would be a positive. I think it would be a positive because there's some uncertainty about whether or not that deal uh, gets done. It's obviously constructive, as we saw with U.S., Mexico, uh, Canada. You know, I think some good news is probably anticipated, but it would be a positive for the economy. For Do you sure. think the, the Trump tax cuts are still fueling this economic growth? Well, certainly, as I mentioned, you know, 2018 was the strongest year for growth in, in a decade. The tax cuts are on the books now. Uh, they had certainly had a positive effect on the economy last year. And I think it's too soon to tell how big an effect they will have. But it's been a positive. And on trade, I yeah. mean, you mentioned that it's been a source of uncertainty. How yeah. much do you think that the global slowdown is being caused by the trade tensions that have been elevated? I haven't really seen an estimate of that. I guess my sense is, is probably not a lot. I think there are other factors. I think that's more things that people worry about that could, could be a problem, but I don't think so far it's been an issue. Some people are wondering if we're starting to see green shoots globally, the Chinese mm. manufacturing number, the yeah. fact they've stimulated their economy so much. Is it too early to say that? <laughs> I don't think I'll use that term, but what I would say when you look at the data, Sarah, um, is that the macro data globally has been surprising on the downside now for about a year. So if you rewind the clock to a year ago when you were here, there was a lot of optimism. I think now perhaps the, the expectations are more in line with the, with the data and there's some prospect for an upturn in, in global growth uh, later in the year. You're sounding very positive to me yeah. on global growth, on U.S. growth, and yet the Fed has made a big reversal. You, you, you're patient. You're on pause. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a big U-turn, and the market has certainly responded. Well, I wouldn't characterize it that way. What we've said is that we can afford to be patient because we're really operating very close to our goals of maximum employment and price stability. You know, there's been a lot of rate normalization that has been done under both Chair Yellen and, and Chair Powell, and we think it's appropriate now to be patient and step back and see how the data um, evolves. And so, as I said, the economy's in a good place, and I think monetary policy's in a good place.